item of business, seeing that we have a quorum, is the uh, committee reorganization. Does anyone have any thoughts on uh, any reorganization and any positions? I think Paul's done a fantastic job as chair. So I'd like to renominate Paul as chair. I'll second that. I will accept the nomination. All those, uh, well, any, dis any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, thank you very much. People. Oh, I, have to, I have to interrupt. Um, I have been reminded by town council that um, uh, remote meetings, you do have to do roll call vote. So after every vote, you're gonna have to go through each member and they're gonna have to vote. You have to say their name and they'll have to say um, yes or no. Well, very similar to the executive session process then? Uh, it's like any remote, any public meeting um, has to, regard, regardless of what committee it is, has to do roll call. I have to start reminding the other boards to do that as well. Select board does it, but I have to remind everyone. I'm assuming school committee does the same, right, Annie? You're muted. Uh, no, we don't, but and I'm glad that's being recorded. That's my fault, but we will going forward. So learn <laughs> something new all the time. Good news. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then let's uh, revote. The uh, chair's position. Uh, let's start with uh, David Phil. Yes. Okay. Uh, Randy Iser. Yes. Christine Pipchinski. Yes. Okay. The uh, motion passes. Thank you very much again. And uh, also, we should uh, think about a recording secretary, somebody to take minutes for our committee. And I know Amy used to do that for us. Yes, she did. So I'm wondering if anyone wants to step up to the plate and take her place. I can do that temporarily at least. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no such thing as temporary. Okay. Uh, David Phil has been nominated. Do we have a second? Second. second. All right. That was pretty a loud chorus there. And uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor of appointing David Phil as our recording secretary, signify by saying aye. Roll call. Well, that's correct. Sorry. <laughs> well, let's do it again. Randy? Yes. Christine Pepchinski? Yes. Paul McCretzky, yes. David Phil? Yes. Okay, congratulations. Thank you for stepping up to do this, David. Okay, moving right along, we're gonna look at the uh, review of the capital proposals for the upcoming fiscal year and vote on recommendations if we are ready. It looks like we have roughly about 19 individual proposals here, totaling a little over, what's 1.9 million, Linda? I was wondering. Um, do you want me to show that to start with? Yeah, if you want to put the uh, sheet up, that would be great. And, and Paul, if I can just as an introduction, when I sent those requests out, it was mm -hmm. um, the request was for this special town meeting as well as annual town meeting. Um, most of the requests uh, were had checked off this meeting, but you will see that obviously we cannot fund all of these. So that I just... I want to ask the committee members that that be in there as they listen to the department heads and as they ask questions, because they're going to be there's going to be some decision making involved as whether it's going to be special town meeting um, or annual town meeting. And that's where Linda is really going to um, provide the, the really important information right now. So mm -hmm. okay, I, Linda. I can't I can't see how you're seeing it, but are you saying the FY23? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So. Um, if you didn't get my email about half hour ago, the only change, there have been a couple of changes. One is on police. Um, I had 
I had pulled up some old material and put in a, a couple of last year's requests, which have now been pulled out. But I did keep the cruiser in, but you'll note over here on the far side that it's coming out of leasing. That's in their budget once again. Body cameras is the only new one that it, they're asking to be funded um, this year. So then, uh, then we broke it down because DPW had quite a few. So I broke it down by highway, by water, by sewer. And then HWS is uh, something that is highway, water, sewer. They're being split in the three directions. And, mm -hmm. and then uh, we have uh, two requests from the school and we have one request from Hadley Media. So all parties are here, are here tonight. And um, yes, as, uh, as Carolyn was warning, warning, I just put everything in the borrowing within the levy and that obviously is not going to stand as it is because that's quite higher. So I've just only made decisions to a certain point. Water and sewer went in their columns. Hadley Media is coming out of Hadley Media. So um, I don't know if you want to sit this to sit here on the screen, Paul, or if you want to just uh, have left that as a uh, as an intro and then we move into the presentations why don't we leave it on while we're having the presentations or are you going to put the individual sheets up as they're being presented oh you do want that no i it really i'm fine with this but i didn't know if you yeah were going to do that. I, i'm very I think... fine with the way this is set up unless anyone else has right. any objection to this yeah i think the is most everyone... important thing out, out of the individual sheets is what got condensed here where who it's from uh how much it is and what it's for and they, they can explain it from there all right and then maybe when all the presentations are done linda you can go into the, some of the details on the financing side of this we'll okay we'll see okay uh oh, dr. Dr. dr mckenzie has a hand, hand up Dr. McKenzie, yes. Yeah, I'm so sorry to ask this, Paul, and I want to apologize to my colleagues. If it's at all possible, because I don't want to put Christine on the spot, I have another meeting in Greenfield at 6.30. If it's possible for the school department requests, Christine will stay for the meeting, for the entire meeting, but if I were to I answer questions, it would help me greatly, because I have to be up in Greenfield for 6.30 for a, a different meeting. Um, so I apologize in advance to the other department heads, and I don't know if the committee would consider allowing, if you have questions about the school department, starting with that. Well, I have no objection at all, and uh, we hope to get you to the meeting on time. So why don't you go right ahead? And all right. We have two my, items. Yeah, my fellow department heads can give me stuff tomorrow. <laughs> um, well, all right, so let me have the floor. this email. All right. Um, Two things, and um, we do have a, a host of things that we're looking to fund next year, but there's a big chunk of things we'll be funding out of school choice. I believe that the, I know Carolyn, you received it and maybe the entire capital planning committee has received it, um, maybe not, but we have a 10 year plan uh, for facilities renovations and we've identified funding sources, whether it's grant funding, um, school choice funding, our revolving accounts, or if we're asking for town capital support. These two items we're asking for town capital support. One is the replacement of um, ceiling tiles. So they still have glued in ceiling tiles at Hopkins. Last year, thank goodness not this year, last year at the start of the school year, it was incredibly humid on the first day of school. And um, yeah, they were popping off and it was like an earthquake drill in California when I was a kid, you know, like we were like kids get out of the desk <laughs> and cover your head. So it is a real issue that we'd like to address is we'd like these uh, ceiling tiles to be updated. And um, we probably, yeah, so that's, that's primarily about uh, safety there. Those glued in ceiling tiles replaced with laid in both uh, Collier's recommended that from their facilities audit that they did for us in the 10 year plan. And the second item is our alarm vendor and um, Chief Spank Nabel. So our alarm vendor for our fire alarms indicated that our units are old and they really need to be replaced. And Chief Spank Nabel also agreed that um, there need to, he recommended several upgrades to that system. And so the ceiling tiles, the estimate that we have is 163,400 and the fire alarm is 21.5.
Okay, and the fire alarms are also at Hopkins? Uh, at Hopkins, and I believe fire alarms, yeah, at Hopkins. This is just, we're looking at Hopkins. We'd look at both of them, um, but both schools, just to double check that this is a Hopkins issue. Yeah. Okay, anyone have any questions for Dr. McKenzie? How old, how old are your estimates and how long are they good for? So both the estimate on the ceiling tiles, uh, these estimates came from the facilities audit that Colliers did. So Colliers assist schools that are going through mass school building authority, doing massive renovations or new builds. We got that in May, I believe is when it was presented to the school committee, May of 2022. Um, and the fire alarm uh, estimate was over the summer. And so how long are they good for? Um, this, we used our facilities audit. So we don't have specific vendors that gave us this. We got this from Collier's on our facilities audit. Um, so we don't have a deadline on, on what, how long the cost estimate is good for. Don't have a time. It's not like it's only good for 30 days or 60 days. We're using the estimates that we were given from Collier's facilities audit. Okay, I understand what you're saying, and I'm I'm new to this uh, situation here, so forgive me if I asked this question too many questions. But so these really aren't legitimate or realistic estimates, or that you haven't gone to a vendor and said how much are you going to charge charge us to do this? Is that we correct? Have so we haven't asked for a specific price quote from a vendor. I would, I would say that this is what Collier's does. This is all that they do. So I would trust their estimates um, as, as solid estimates. Okay. All this right. is Thank a business you. area in our renovation recommendations for schools. Any other questions from anyone? Okay, just one quick one. Will this be done in fiscal 23 or is this on the boards for 24? So the request is that um, if you folks, if it were funded in the fall, then mm -hmm. we would do this in fiscal 23. These are projects that we can do over breaks, school breaks. Okay, great. Anyone or worst else? scenario at the very end of the school year when kids are out. But these are things you can do easily over breaks. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Well, Dr. McKenzie, enjoy your trip to Greenfield. Always. Okay. With you for thank a few more minutes. Bit. All right, thank you so much. Thank you all. You're welcome. Thanks, Annie. Bye. Okay, next up since uh, there's only two items for the police department and we have a rep, uh, Mitch, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, you are up. Okay, my understanding is I only have one item on which is the body cameras. Well, and we have the cruiser on there too, but that's a routine. <laughs> That's being funded out of the budget. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So with regards to our, our, uh, our body cameras, our body cam, the lifespan on the body cameras is approximately three to five years. And uh, as everybody knows, or likely knows, this is our first round with uh, body cameras and cruiser cameras. We uh, estimate the lifespan to be three to five years, but we have found as we uh, just exceeded the two year mark that they are not, uh, they are not lasting. And um, we feel as though as part of that has to do with supply chain issues and the uh, supply chain issues have resulted in delayed replacements when we do, uh, when we do break a body camera, it happens. Um, you know, if we get into, um, if we get into a tussle with someone, they fall off and they, they, they hit the ground. Um, you know, we had an officer, uh, who was out on storm, 
removing a, tr a tree branch out of the road, the body camera broke off and fell in the road. Um, these kind of things happen. So right now our fleet of 10 body cameras is down to five. And so we, um, so our body cameras, the five that we have are being used more fre frequently because obviously there are less of them. Um, we have looked into funding sources to cover, uh, to cover uh, the cost of this replacement. And uh, they're the only programs that are out there right now are for new or expansion programs. And this is neither, this is uh, a replacement. And uh, it, for those not aware, half of this uh, original new program was funded by the state. And the town only had to, uh, the town only had to provide the other half. Um, with regards to the rest of the system, the cruiser camera system, uh, the cruiser cameras are okay for the time being. And obviously the, the cruiser cameras are mounted within the cruiser as opposed to the body cameras, they're worn on the officer. They get moved around and jostled around as I explained earlier. Um, so the cameras that we would be looking to replace with would be a better quality of camera. So we're hoping that this, that this replacement would give us a better quality product and it would hopefully last closer to the five years before we'd have to replace them. Um, and, uh, and with regards to the body cameras, um, you know, if you would have asked me five or 10 years ago about body cameras, um, you know, I would not have been this enthusiastic about them, but, um, they are literally one of the best things that's ever happened to the police department. Um, we use them frequently. Um, we use them all the time for court. Um, you know, I've got a stack just from, this is just a, a week of discovery requests or I've got five recovery discovery requests for cruiser body camera. Um, they're invaluable for that um, in, in that sense. Um, I use them for traffic hearings and um I use them for traffic hearings and for show cause hearings, the very initial stages uh, of, of, uh, of criminal cases and for traffic, essentially traffic court. And during the hearings, I can literally pull video up and, uh, and answer questions that we would not have been able to answer before. You, you know, what, you know, was an incident caught on radar? Well, hold on a second. I can pull the thing up and I can, I can see the officer's radar. Um, and for the occasional complaint, the, uh, you know, for, for, for speeding complaints, the occasional, the occasional resident will call the police department and say, why did a cruiser go by my house doing 75 miles an hour? And we're, we're able to go and we're able to identify that cruiser. We're able to go and actually pull up that cruiser speedometer and see how fast they were going. We can figure out why they were going that fast. And um, still there. Am I, am I still talking? My phone rang. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and the uh, and the uh, the occasional civilian complaint, and uh, without getting into too much detail, um, we had a complaint we received in mid-August that uh, that alleged that an officer uh, pushed or grabbed a, 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 a civilian during during a call. Well, it was pretty easy to go back and look at the video to see that that just didn't happen. So we were able to. Uh, we were able to document that and uh, and in the likely in the uh, likely event that uh, this particular person tries to sue the agency and sue the town. Well, we're going to have the video that shows that, that actually didn't happen. Um, and uh, and for instance, and, and, and another incident that we had er just earlier this year, uh, we had un unfortunately we had a motor vehicle accident that resulted in a fatality uh, back in March. And uh, had it not been for our body and cruiser cameras, um, we would have had no supporting evidence to show that uh, this particular accident didn't happen as a result of our officer's conduct. And, you know, the Cliff Notes version is, is that the officer was trying to stop this individual after seeing, uh, making observations that the party could be impaired just before 2 a.m., uh, on a rainy night, and uh, and that individual uh, sped away from officers before he even turned the blue lights on. And unfortunately, by the time the officer caught up to him, he had struck a tree. We were able to go back that night. Within an hour, we were able to go back. We were able to watch the video, and we were able to clear that officer of any wrongdoing. And uh, and we feel as though that if the family does decide they want to try to sue the town, well, it's going to be 
uh, it is going to be exhibit number one in, in, a, in a lawsuit. So these body cams and cruiser cameras are extraordinarily invaluable, not only to us, uh, but for the protection of the town uh, liability wise. And uh, that's all I have for, uh, let's see what else. Uh, this was the, the quote for $46,464. That was a quote that was received by, the, uh, by our uh, a vendor. And uh, that quote is good until November 8th of 2022. Right. Mitch, does that in, include the entire fleet replacing it or is that it 40, the forty six thousand four hundred sixty four dollars is for the body cams only body cams only. Oh, OK. For 10. Cruiser, I'm sorry. Oh. Go ahead, sir. For 10 of them. Uh, I believe it is 10 of them. Yes. Hmm. Any other questions, anyone? Well, thank you, Lieutenant. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Did you want me to, uh, Linda, did you need me to talk about the cruiser at all? Um, no, we'll talk about that later on. It's covered for this year because it's going to be paid. Um, we, uh, uh, Mike Mason had said that it's the leasing is already underway. So you're probably, you're set for this year. And we will then take it up at some later point as to whether this was the best way to go forward or whether we'll do it differently next year and get it. Um, maybe uh, a option is to either uh, borrow again through this way or uh, maybe more uh, easier to work through might be to add that to the police budget, the full amount and, and have it, uh, bought outright by the police each year, just out of budget. You mean to tell me that you don't like the amount of paperwork that we had to do with this whole lease thing? You, you know, neither of us likes it. <laughs> and, and there are some hidden fees in there. I mean, there were some extra fees and, and uh, not, not just counting the, the time and effort and the, some confusion and who's calling who. Um, it, was, it was, it got a little crazy there, but we did get that first lease and that's under payment. And, um, and so I think for the if the idea was each year you would add one more set of payments. And so if we were to increase this in the budget for 24, for example, then it wouldn't be adding 65,000 to your budget. It would be adding the difference between the cost of the new cruiser and the leasing expenses for two cruisers that are already in your budget. So Correct. I think, that, I, think uh, I, I think that um, we will probably both be supporting that if that is possible for the town to do going forward. I would definitely tend to agree with that. You know, obviously through, through COVID that our, our hopes were to decrease the, uh, you know, the, the, the chunk of the uh, amount of the cruiser per year until we got to a point where the leasing essentially approached right. that and go back to buying. So. Right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good rest of your night. Okay, we have uh, we have a rep from Hadley Media. Yeah, he's out in the soccer field there, I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, How's everyone doing today? Very good. How are you? Good, very good. Good. Okay, you're on board. Uh, if you want to talk a little bit about the equipment. Yeah, absolutely. So um, just to give a little background, I've only been here for a month, pretty much. This is my, it's pretty sure it's week five. I've been uh, working for the town, um, which meant that uh, since I got here, I saw there was a lot of uh, a lot of stuff needed to be updated, um, need upgrades for things, um, stuff that we didn't have that we needed. And long story short, I blew through the majority of our capital budget that was approved um, for this fiscal year be before I came aboard with the town. Um, and there's still a lot that we need to do to um, get up, get up to par. Um, some immediate things that that will be coming out of this 20 grand, which I believe you, which um, when I was speaking to Linda and Carolyn, we were just given a lump sum of uh, cash to uh, use for my retention account. 
Um, but I'll just explain what we're going to be needing for uh, the immediate future um, once this gets passed. Um, first, foremost, uh, we're going to be working on some uh, computer upgrades. Um, currently, the director computer is not even um, meant for video production or anything. So we're looking to um, get that all upgraded at some point. Um, I'm looking to get a couple more laptops um, for the department. One for streaming purposes to the uh, channels and Facebook and YouTube. Another one just to have on hand. Um, currently for our select board meetings, we're currently using a COA computer. I'd rather use a computer that is Hadley Media um, instead of relying on a computer being available that night. Um, some other things that we're looking to upgrade is our software subscriptions replacement. So currently we're using um, Adobe Creative Cloud as a yearly subscription. I'm looking to scratch that and get some software that um, it's not subscription. It's a one-time cost um, and it's, we get uh, the upgrades for life. Um, these are companies that don't have to rely on subscriptions to, uh, um, to sustain. Uh, one example is a, uh, a court brand called uh, DinVinci Resolve that is um, a video editing software. Uh, it is made by Black Magic Design. Black Magic Design makes other uh, products such as cameras, um, lenses, um, video switching uh, so uh, devices, and, all, and so forth. So they don't, they don't need to depend on the su uh, subscription fees to sustain. And honestly, they're just as good as Creative Cloud, if not better, in my opinion. Um, so it's kind of a gist of, um, of what I'm trying to accomplish with that 20 grand. And then there might be some other things that pop up, um, something breaks, you need to get a replacement, um, and, for, and other things to be developed in the future during this fiscal year. Great. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Uh, Linda, I see this is coming out of the uh, enterprise fund for right. media. So what's the yeah. balance? What's the total balance in that? So the um, the Hadley Media reserves, uh, well, they would have to be certified again as of uh, July one. But we ended up the last year with about one hundred seventy thousand left in uh, in their um, in their reserves, and um, there was also as as. Alex mentioned there had been 10,000 left in a prior article and the way the Hadley Media Equipment articles have been funded it's just been we've been 10,000 15,000 an amount goes in there and then when it's spent down it's replenished with a new article like this so I did encourage uh, Alex to go ahead and and make it a, a, a little bit higher than what he thinks he needs right now because it's just going to sit in that article and, until it's needed and had he not had the balance left over but before, he would have been quite um, quite stuck uh, with a couple of situations this last couple of months since he started, or maybe not even two months yet, um, where he needed to do immediate replacements. And it certainly is not in the $70,000, $75,000 budget that he's allocated each year. So there's no point having this money sit in reserves when the um, station needs this to operate. So. Um, that's where it would come from, and they have the money. And how much do we take in in fees every year, roughly? I know it varies, but approximately. Well, we just got that one lump sum payment at the end of the year from Charter. Last year, it was, uh, this past year, we took in, it was 71200 uh, no, wait a minute, I'm sorry. <laughs> Cable uh, was almost 71,000, 70,911,022. It was a little higher in 21, 72,775. 20, it was 71,465. So it was just, a, just about in there, uh, in that range based on a percentage. Um, this is the last year, is that right, uh, Carolyn and Alex? This is this current year, and I think David Phil was, was involved in it too. This is the last year and there's a committee to negotiate new terms for beginning FY23? Does anyone else know? We're two years out, I believe. Yeah. Two I, years, I, two I, years I, to I, go? 
I'm not positive it's either 23 or 24. I don't remember offhand. Right. Well, we're in 23. So it might, I think it's 24 then. I think we're in the last year. No, but I mean, the, the contract goes to calendar year 23 or 24. Oh, no, that's yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Great. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, Alex, how much money do you think you, you, all this stuff you've told us you need immediately, what kind of money does that add up to roughly? About 10, close to 10 grand, maybe. Okay. And you feel uh, not even 10 grand, not even 10 grand. Okay. And you're going to feel comfortable with the remaining 10, 12, whatever thousand dollars for the next six months. Absolutely. I believe that I should be able to sustain. Um, if not, um, I can always reach out to my colleagues in the area to see if I can borrow equipment if needed. Um, so it's not like I'll be screwed for life. Um, right now <laughs> I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually uh, borrowing a system from my old station in Granby. So, um, for, uh, select board meetings for the audio, that's why the audio sounds so much better right now. So, um, but I believe, um, that's being taken care of right now. In fact, I'm meeting with a vendor tomorrow to take care of that, um, new system for Hadley. So. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much, Alex. We appreciate it. You're more than welcome and looking forward to working with everyone soon. Okay. Thank you again. Yep. All right. Now uh, we move on to EPW. And Scott, you're up next. And why don't we just go right down the list that Linda have, has here that she presented to us. It begins with the highway, then goes on the water, sewer, and then the combination. So, Scott. Yeah. Say, okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Good evening. The first, the first item we're requesting is a replacement one-ton dump truck. Uh, those are the smaller dump trucks that most everyone sees on the road every day. Uh, the one we're looking to place replace is a 2008. It's it has 80,000 miles on it, and it is starting to have a lot of rot issues uh, with the cab. Uh, just from the life it lives in the winter, especially in the winter time, plowing snow and being in the salt. Uh, and it's, it's like I said, it's, it's an everyday driver for us. And another problem is availability on these vehicles. Uh, you're, you're probably talking 24 to 30 months out from date of purchase. Uh, and this vehicle also was starting to have some mechanical problems too when we currently did some repairs. So it, it's just starting to see uh, it, its life. Are you there, Paul? Did we lose him? Yes, I am. Just had to step aside for a minute. Yeah. Okay. We're listening. I Keep do, going. Yeah, I do have estimates on that vehicle from uh, a vendor, so that that price quote is uh, good at the moment. Uh, the second one is the. Uh, replacement payloader. Uh, this item was brought to the Springtown meeting and rejected, and I'm putting it back on again. It is a valuable piece of equipment for us. The current two payloaders are in pretty rough condition. Uh, the oldest one is a 1995. Uh, you know, it has some breakdowns. Uh, parts and things of that nature are coming hard to get because of its age. Uh, it, it, you know, loads sanders in the wintertime. It plows snow. It goes out on a regular basis to do work within the town. It is a, an item that we need to continue giving great service to the people of Hadley. Without this equipment, uh, we can't provide our service to the people. Uh, 
this this vehicle also from the spring town meeting went up about ten thousand uh, dollars so it's a it's a very high priority need and a very expensive one also what kind of lead time would there be on this uh, depending on availability, what they have, this this may be available relatively quick. The, some of this equipment is starting to be produced a little faster and better. Uh, so and th that the turnaround on that may may be better or faster. But it is it is a higher need uh, piece of equipment. The newer the payloaders now looks like it may need. Uh, possible center pin replacement that basically holds the machine together. And just a guesstimate on that from the vendor was a minute, about $30,000. So these machines, they're just, they live a tough life and it, it, we just need replacements. I, I, this loader, uh, if we break down in the winter time, we're unable to load our sanders and stuff and it becomes a, a very big problem for everyone uh, trying to travel the roads and et cetera. Uh, we really need that piece of equipment. Is this the, the article that got rejected due to the funding source issue? Yes. The funding source has been moved 100% to the highway department. Originally, the funding was 50% uh, highway and 50% water. Yeah, okay. So it's not going to be used by water? Well, <laughs> they do use it, and I just need to figure out with Carolyn how, uh, when they use it, we'll have to keep track of the hours and bill the water department for use or, or something I, I haven't fine tune that with Carolyn, we've been talking about it and we just haven't come up with a real answer for that, but they do use it. Maybe not 50% so, of the time with the highway department, but it definitely gets used by the water department. And, and, I, and I'm not opposed for maybe even having a discussion here about still putting some of the, having some of the funding paid for water because you know the analogy is um, we have generators for so many things that we don't use every day, but when we need it, we need it. And this is similar to this piece of equipment. So, you know, I'm not opposed for some more discussion. And then I, I really need the assistance of members of um, the Capitol Committee at town meeting to, to support that. And I, I wanna talk more about that in future meetings, but um, I, I think we were all caught off guard at the last meeting. And I think we can do a good job of explaining how it's used wouldn't want to use pictures because there are pictures of water using it. But um, I think we need to really, um, I think we need to be wise in this. And, and I don't know that charging it is that that's a whole additional administration administrative task that, um, you know, I hate to add on to any of the staff, but I just wanted to add that, that I think we need to have more discussion about it. Well, Scott, are you, are you able to get an estimate? You know, a rough, I know it'd be very rough, but as the you know, proportioning, what section or amount would be water and what is highway as far as the usage is concerned? And I know that's yeah, it Yeah, it'd be a real guesstimate. Uh, like, I, like, like Carolyn said, it's one of those things when you need it, you need it. Uh, and But I can try to look at some work orders and things of that nature and see how often it's really used by the water department. It, it, it is, and it is used to load and unload material and move things and what have you by that, by the water department, just, you know, periodically. Hey, I think the issue was at the Springtown meeting, I, if I remember the select board was unanimous and the finance, or the capital committee was also unanimous in the support for it, but the, the, the narrative was changed to the the possible use uh i think it got turned into water quality and all kinds of other pathways on town meeting floor unfortunately that really had nothing to do with this piece of equipment so that's the challenge 
I, th I agree with Carolyn that we should come up with some kind of a formula up front rather than doing this back charging thing. I mean, that's going to be a pain in a lot of people's behinds to, to make that happen. So somehow we got to figure it out and then convince the people at town meeting that that makes sense for whatever reason we decide it does. So maybe we can use the past as a guide to the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I did a little research with, uh, you know, from uh, Dennis Pip about the one we're looking to replace on the machine. It does say Hadley Highway Water Department. And Dennis told me back when this was bought that it was bought 50-50 from each department. And he believes the newer one was not. It was 100% bought out of the highway. But I guess that's... I know, somewhat irrelevant, but I, that's what Dennis did tell me back when that was bought in uh, 95. And it seems if it is being used for water, then the water should be footing part of the bill. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if we look at it, maybe a 70-30 mm -hmm. split or 75-25 maybe. But last time, I, wasn't it? 50 50 last time yeah we, we we asked for 50 50 last time that's what i remembered what does the uh the water reserves look like are they still in pretty good shape for the enterprise fund i should say hold on just a moment the water reserves um again these will all be recertified as of july 1 but uh, if we start with last July and everything that it was spent on during the uh, past fiscal year, um, there will be other adjustments, but we ended the year with $1.2 million balance in the water reserves. Um, uh, and it yes. looks like there's what, about 325, 350 worth of stuff coming out of water for capital on the current request on the on, on this column here yeah, yeah. looks like yeah, uh the, the total is 369 there and at the bottom the, the bottom line is the, the total okay. um yeah 360 but remember it's not we're not then reducing the 1.2 million by 360,000 if right. if we decide i mean we can you can buy it outright it's um or um, we put it in, we borrow it, and we make the payments out of the water reserves each year because there a portion of the water budget is payment of um, uh, the, the debt payments. And we have items coming off, new items go on. Uh, it's sort of part of the plan here. I haven't really figured out exactly what's coming off. I could spend some more time on that if you'd like to see um, to see how this would affect well, if everything passed, I, I really wanted a sense of, of how you were going with these tonight. But when we've come up with an estimate of what you would approve and what would be out of water, I can see how that will look in the water borrowings of, for the next few years. Linda, that's how we used to do it when I worked up in Greenfield. You know, we'd hit the water enterprise fund for their share of the mm -hmm. borrowing cost, the debt service. And it was the same amount every year to keep it simple so that, you know, Scott doesn't have to keep any logs or records or whatever. It's just, this is a certain percentage and it would stay throughout the life right. of that particular project. Right, any uh, other comments or any other questions? Well, Scott, let's, speaking of water, let's move on to the water. Um, there's one, there's one here. I'm sorry for the highway. Uh, I, I have a mistake on one page. I have highway and then the other one, uh, DPW high water sewer. It's the five ton dump truck that needs to be moved. Uh, I spoke to Carolyn about this to the highway department only. Is that the international? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I actually changed the funding source over to it, but, um, I meant to move the lineup, but I didn't move the lineup. But you, if you see down there under uh, the shared one, the 310,000, I did put it, I, I 
removed it from the water and sewer lines. But yeah. I just but, forgot to move it up, I guess. But yes, you um, Why don't we talk about that now, Scott? Since yeah, so this highway. is a 1997 international uh, dump truck slash sander. Uh, it's the oldest one in our fleet. It is really starting to have rot problems. Uh, it recently got a sticker, but the mechanic shop had to do a lot of patchwork to the truck uh, to get it uh, to pass for an inspection sticker. And it's only a matter of time when it's not gonna pass for a sticker. And also with this, this current, this truck also, the sander slips into the dump body. So as everyone remembers last year, our little bit of uh, freezing rainstorm, uh, this truck here was uh, basically useless to us. It couldn't move because the salt comes out in the rear of the truck, not in front of the drive wheels, which makes a big difference for us. When, usually when we put down our salt, it's coming out in front of the wheels. So the trucks are constantly getting traction. So this particular one, uh, the senior guy actually took it around town where he kept close to the shop and actually went in reverse with his vehicle just to try to keep things moving. So the technology of the truck is old and we're just looking to update it. Plus, you know, like I said, plus the mechanical problems, especially with the rock. Uh, it's really, it's really starting to show its age. And another, and one other thing with this too, you're talking another 24 month lead time. So we, we ordered the vehicle. You're, it would be probably 24 months before you would see it, but it, you know, ordering the truck and then having it built, putting the body and things on. So there is hopefully the vehicle last another couple of years in our fleet because we really need it. Uh, some of these vehicles kind of were neglected. I'm not sure if they were put on, you know, a capital before I came here, but this truck here is in desperate need of being replaced. Scott, I'm just curious uh, if you get a new vehicle and this one is so old, is there any uh, increased fuel efficiency with the new ones? Oh yeah, the, the fuel efficiency is a lot better. Uh, Obviously, the engines are updated. The, you know, the drive lines, the transmission, and all that stuff. There is, there is a better fuel economy, but taking into consideration too, most of the time when these vehicles are on the road, they are either plowing snow, which it's working and it's burning more fuel, or carrying a load, so it's weighted and carrying more fuel or burning more fuel. But overall, the fuel economy is better but under working conditions, it's still not the greatest. Okay, thanks. Any other questions before we move on to the water department? Okay, let's, let's hear from the water department, Scott. Okay, uh, the first one would be Callahan well reconditioning. Uh, the well, one of the wells at the Callahan well, uh, wells is not pumping enough water and it needs to be serviced and reconditioned to make it be able to pump more water. Uh, this is somewhat of a relatively common thing with these kind of wells. They do need to be reconditioned. Uh, every, we, we do what, there's three wells there and the other two have been conditioned. This one here is the next one in the cycle. Uh, it's I'm asking for thirty-five thousand uh, dollars. If if we don't if you don't fund this, we're going to have problems uh, meeting our demand for the residents for water, uh, you know, drinking water and fire protection. So this is kind of a real necessity to us to uh, keep everyone uh, safe in town. How often do you have to recondition these things, Scott? Uh, they've been doing every about 10 years, Randy. Uh, so the plant is just, I think, turned 20 years old. So the last uh, couple of years, each one has been done. So this is the third one. So we do after we do this one, in theory, we should be good for about 
15 years before we have to start the cycle again. Okay. If everything goes good. Gotcha. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Let's keep moving on. Uh, uh, pump upgrades at the water plant. Uh, obviously in the water plant, there's chemical feed pumps to uh, put chemicals into the water. Uh, uh, chemicals remove the manganese and put our chlorine in, et cetera. And some of these pumps are original to the building, uh, 20 years old, and they are need to be updated. They're starting to have mechanical problems and the technology and the pumps have really changed. Uh, and we're looking to uh, upgrade those pumps for our process can be more streamlined through the uh, computer system. Uh, this is another kind of a standard thing that the plants in the 20 year uh, range and things are starting to uh, need a little updating. Is, is this for all the pumps in the plant that you're referring to that in, in similar type pumps? Uh, no, these are little ones, Randy. They just like pump the chlorine into the water, you know, put our dosing into the water of chlorine, uh, the potassium permanganate to uh, take the uh, manganese out of the water. They're not, they're not like big, you know, 150 horsepower driven pumps. They're, they're very, very small pumps. They're just uh, chemical feed pumps. Yeah, so that's what I think, what I'm trying to say is, are you going to replace all the chemical feed pumps or just some of them? Uh, just some of them. Uh, some of them do not need replacing. Uh, we've actually done a couple out of our regular O&M budget, but these particular ones, uh, they're a little more expensive and we feel that we could use some funding out of the enterprise to uh, up, update those. Okay, thank you. Uh, replacement pickup truck for the water department. Uh, the oldest water department pickups is 2014 Ford, approximately right now with, I thought I had the mileage on it, but I don't, uh, I don't uh, the current mileage but we're just trying to be proactive on a vehicle replacement that it, it takes so long to get vehicles. You're talking once again, a 24 month probably wait time on a vehicle. Uh, the vehicle does still have some life, but we're just trying to get a little bit of a cycle going to uh, get a vehicle in the pipeline. Uh, this vehicle is not garaged. We don't have a garage, so it lives its life outside and it's starting to show some uh, you know, problems from being weathered. The replacement vehicle we we're proposing would have an enclosed back body to keep the tools and equipment out of the weather. Uh, right now, uh, obviously, a lot of tools have to be taken in and out on a regular basis to be a, to avoid being in the weather. So we are looking for an enclosed body also to uh, keep our equipment out of the weather. Any questions? Hey, uh, Scott, how about the water meter and testing equipment? Like yep. So the water meter reading slash testing equipment, uh, our current handheld uh, meter reader a device that we could go out and retrieve data out of a meter. Like if someone protests a bill, we can go out and try to retrieve the information out of it is, is out dated and it's uh needs some repairs and it can't be fixed uh this new device that they have it it coincides with a, a tablet or a smartphone yeah. so we just we just need the uh they call it the belt clip uh literally like a little box that will sync to a piece of equipment so we can go out and uh get meter reads and uh data out of the meters uh some of the a lot of the newer meters, uh, we can re retrieve a lot of data out of them if required. If somebody asks for something or protests a, a, a bill, we can uh, get that information out. And currently right now the handheld devices uh, 
unrepairable. It's, it's just a computer thing. It's, it's just out of date. Okay. Any questions, comments? Sue Glowatsky has her hand up, Paul. Sue? Yeah, if I could just make a comment on that. Um, that's very important when we have abatement applications uh, that the water department has the ability to um, actually, they show uh, flow rates and everything else. It's, it's huge. Um, otherwise we're, you know, we're kind of stuck one person's word against another person's word. A lot of curiosity then, Scott, right now, do you read the meters just by driving by and it picks up the radio frequency? Yes. Uh, uh, I'd say, nine, Sue, correct me if I'm wrong, 95% radio. I think we only have a handful. We I have think we only have... Reads. I think we only have seven that are not radio reads. Yeah, so I'll call that we're 99% uh, <laughs> yeah. done, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> so when we go out and do a big meter read, uh, the guys actually have to install a, a laptop in the truck and a, a radio antenna and et cetera. Uh, it's a little bit of work to do. Like th this particular uh, item I'm requesting would just, it take it's, we just would leave it in a truck along with, uh, you know, everybody, every employee is assigned an iPhone and, and there's a few tablets. So if we uh, get a request for a uh, water meter, re meter read on a closing or uh, if someone's questioning a read, et cetera, we have the capability of doing that uh, right then and there in, in a very timely manner. If not, we have to go back and set up the uh, computer and everything in the truck. Thanks. Anyone else? Okay, let's move on to the sewer department. Yes, the sewer department, uh, once again, re trying to be proactive on a truck replacement. Uh, the current oldest sewer trucks, 2016 F-250, currently has 65,000 miles on it. Uh, at the sewer garage, uh, currently we can garage one truck, one lives outside. So once again, we are looking to get a truck that would have an enclosed utility body so we could keep tools and equipment inside and stored, you know, out of the weather. Uh, in this particular truck, if funded, but we would like to move it to the mechanic uh, that currently the mechanics truck is uh, a hand-me-down from the sewer department. And it's really starting to uh, show its age and rot. It's, it's got extreme body rot. So we would like to repurpose this vehicle also for the mechanic. So you're looking at two F-250s, one for water and one for sewer. Yeah, actually, actually, I it would be an F-350. I mean, that's here and there. We just, we're trying to standardize our fleet to the one ton uh, suspension, it's just a little heavier duty for our application. The price point in that is updating the suspension is very minimal. So it, it's beneficial to us long-term to move to the heavier chassis and we standardize our fleet. Well, is that number, does the 100,000 include the uh, 350 pricing? Yeah, oh yeah, 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 it, it's complete. Yeah, the, uh, and then once again, you're, you're talking 24 months for the vehicle. Uh, it, it just, everything is so crazy in prices, these utility bodies that I, I just, it, 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 it makes me really wonder where we're headed with things. I just could never imagine a pickup truck when it closed body and a lift gate and, you know, some uh, emergency lighting is going to be a hundred thousand dollars. But currently right now, that's where we are. And once again, the time frame is two years. All right, and the current one has, you said, 65. Yes, but we'd like to repurpose that to, like I said, to the mechanic. The mechanic truck is uh, pretty tired. Mm -hmm. this, this truck still has some good, valuable life to us, and we could definitely repurpose it. 
Okay. Anyone else? I have Paul, could I ask? Sure. Um, Scott, should I change each of these to 350s then? Uh, or if you could put one ton trucks would be the best because for whatever reason, if we change okay. manufacturers from Ford, we decided to go to a Chevy or a Dodge, whatever, it just okay. a one ton would be uh, a lot better. Okay. That's, um, I'll, I'll do that. And, and one yeah. thing that really occurs to me is you're saying that there's a two year wait is yes. that people see all of these vehicles being ashed at one time. <laughs> Not only are we not going to see this truck for two years, but we're not going to start paying for it for three years. Mm -hmm. So that some of this is just a matter of acting up front for what we need down the down the road and what we'll start paying for even a year after that. So that's definitely something to factor in when we're looking at the bottom line. We're not looking at something that's going to impact impact next year's budget and if we wait a year we wait until we really need these trucks because they're they're done for that they're, they're still going to be the two-year wait built in there so yeah we ordered one that you that was appropriated last fall town meeting in october we still haven't even got a build date on it and it'll be a year in october so it, it, right the wait the wait time is uh uh crazy right which means we're not paying for it either so Correct. I think, yeah, I, that's, I think that's going to be important for people to understand is that um, we don't pay until we get, and if we're borrowing it, we're not even paying for one more year. So we need to get these items when there's a need or there's an upcoming need, we need to anticipate that and get things into the pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, Good foresight. Point. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, we're trying to be proactive because of the weights. If we have a, a failure, we're going to be kind of somewhat, you know, if it's a major failure, somewhat stranded without a vehicle because they're just not available. And if we buy, happen to have to buy off the lot, we don't get any kind of municipality discount. The, it, it, that only applies to ordered vehicles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, let's move on to the roofs, sewer roofs. Uh, sewer roofs. We, we last spring town meeting, we asked for seventy five thousand dollars to replace replace the sewer roofs. And when our bids came back in, uh, low bid was a hundred thousand dollars. So we are twenty five thousand dollars short from doing this project. So we are requesting twenty five thousand dollars to. Uh, uh, make this roof job happen. We we have the quotes. The there's some language in the contract. Uh, you know, Carolyn talked to the vendor, and I she can hold this quote till the town meeting. It'll still be valid. So we if we get the funding, we can move forward immediately. We, we do not have to go back out the bid. We're just uh, we're just short on the estimate. Okay, well. It was short, but by the time you actually do it, it would be short again. Uh, no, it's not because he, he, the current contractor uh, is willing to hold this price. So if we get this funding and we can move forward immediately after the town meeting that this price will be, uh, we're locked in on this price. Oh, okay, okay. So there, were, there will, will not be a shortfall. Yeah, if we did go out to have to go out to bid again, it would be more than more than the twenty five thousand. So it's, it's it is part of procurement. I, I can do that. I called him yesterday, Scott, and he agreed yes. to the hold it. So we would have to. It would, yeah, we have got time, but it's a special town meeting would definitely be the time to do it. Okay, if there's something going on with your audio, or I don't know if it's me when you speak. It. No, it's her, Paul. Okay, it's not me. No, nope. I'll shut up then. I'll shut up. <laughs> it gets it's like all distorted and staticky. But we can we can. Uh, you can come down the hall, Carolyn. <laughs> we can, can understand. Me. I'll just shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll take so, it personally. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, okay, if that twenty five thousand isn't. Yeah, if if the twenty five thousand isn't funded, obviously it's going to cost us a lot more money. But any any next uh, the matching funds for the sewer grant, uh, we are 
looking at getting a grant uh, to do a sewer uh, infrastructure study with the pump stations and some of the uh, at the plant and some of the uh, piping part of the system uh, are part of the, it's a $100,000 grant and our uh, part of the grant we're responsible for is $24,000. Uh, this would be a huge thing for us to uh, come up with a real, you know, long-term capital plan and some long-term term goals for updates at the sewer plant and at the sewer stations and throughout the system. Uh, this is a great opportunity for us. Uh, I know Carolyn can talk to it a little bit too. Uh, it's, it's, it's a real great opportunity for us. And like I said, it's a hundred thousand dollar grant we're going to get and our portion is $24,000. So does that mean we end up with 124,000 or just a hundred? No, just a hundred. Uh, we have to provide $24,000 and some in-kind service, but it, it's still $75,000 okay. that we're getting for nothing. Yep. So it, it's, it'd be a really good thing for us and we'll have a real game plan and the wastewater plant on what the next step is for the future. We, we do not have any kind of uh, plan for that yet. Good, anyone else? Okay, and finally, we'll move on to the uh, highway water and sewer combination capital items, which are three of them. Yeah. Uh, yep. The replacement of the 1984 case tractor. Uh, this current tractor was, it's a military tractor that was given to the town through the uh, DCR program. And right now that program is somewhat dismantled. I've been talking for a long time with Mike Spangle because all this stuff comes through the fire service and there's just nothing there and they're not doing it at the moment. And we use this tractor for you know roadside mowing uh, mowing the transfer station around a bunch of, you know, the water plant, uh, some of the sewer plants, some fields and stuff that we, we own and we maintain. Uh, currently, the tractor is 100% uh, broke down and uh, looks like it is unfixable. Uh, so we are looking for some funding to get a new tractor so we can uh, continue mowing our uh, areas. Right, right now we uh, right kind of uh, rigged up a, a different brush mower on the front of one of our tractors, but it doesn't work very well. Uh, if we do not fund this, we're probably going to have to uh, outsource this whole project when a when, uh, couple times a year when we have to do this. Uh, so we are looking for $80,000 out of highway water and sewer. Is this the smaller yellow tractor that's being replaced or is this a different one? Yeah, it's the yellow one, David. It, it, it totally died. Okay. Anyone and else? The, new, the, the new replacement tractor, David, just we were looking for one. This, that one's got an open cab. And we were looking for something with an enclosed cab. Uh, we've had problems with like uh, underground bees nests and things like that that we hit that you can't see in you know, there's a little bit of a safety issue there that goes on is we'd like to try to get something with a cab so the operator is somewhat protected. How big of a tractor are you looking at, Scott? It has to be a minimal of, of 70 horsepower, Randy. Uh, the run, it's a seven foot brush hog we have, so it requires a minimal of 70 horse. And that's what we're looking at because some of the areas it has to go in are uh, you know, somewhat congested and we can't really get a real massive tractor into it. So we're looking for like that mid, mid size kind of tractor. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, anyone else? Yeah. Scott, you said this is a mower, is a tractor mower? Is that primarily? Uh, just, just a, yeah, the, the tractor operates the mower. So it's just, it's just a tractor. Okay. And 
the uh, the surplus goes back to the they're going to want it back. The military. Oh uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Everything has to be returned back to them, whether it's working or not. You not really want eight years. <laughs> Come and get it. Yeah. We don't have title to it. It remains in the the government. Interesting. So. Yeah. yeah. Just as well they come and take it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, the next item is uh, the Vactor truck. Our current Vactor truck, uh, it is a 1995 Ford. Uh, the the truck part of it is actually not in terrible shape. The back there part of it is uh, totally rotted. And uh, the other day, uh, the, the me mechanic tried welding another patch into it and it went out for an hour and had imploded another huge hole in it. So right now that vehicle is totally out of service. Uh, it's beyond repair. So right now it is parked. And if we need a Vactor truck, we have to uh, go out and rent one. Uh, this vehicle is used, you know, the clean catch basins. Uh, if we have any water problems, you can vacuum out any, you can hydraulic dig with it or suck out water out of any holes. Uh, the sewer department uses it to maintenance all their sewer pump stations where there's debris and rags and grit uh, build up and we have to suck them down and vacuum out all the material to clean them and keep them in good operating uh, order. It's, it's a very high price item and a very high maintenance item. Uh, but the current one we have is uh, totally out of repair. It's, it, it's done for. Uh, the, the sewer jetter part on the front we can still use, but the vacuum part of it, it's, it's just rotted beyond repair. Scott, what year did you say this was? It's a 1995 Ford. Okay, and it's interesting to know too, as you're talking, I was gonna ask you, how can this be apportioned among the three departments, but you explained that pretty well that I guess all three departments do use it. Yeah, it, it uh, prior to, uh, I guess me getting there, it was used, but not that good. And with our new uh, regime of guys, uh, no one's afraid to run it. Uh, the guys like using it. Uh, it's, a, it's a very valuable tool. Uh, one again, you know, a lot of maintenance items, uh, happen with it and it does we need it for emergencies too uh obviously when emergency happens uh we like our own equipment in our in our garage to be able to respond immediately right now we are at the mercy of trying to get a vendor to come for us in an emergency situation so this is once again a piece of equipment that is a desperate need for the dpw and a very valuable piece of equipment about lead time on this one? Uh, depending on the manufacturer of what model, some are relatively available because they make them and they have them on display and et cetera. And they're, they're such a high ticket item that there's not a lot of turnover on them. So there is limited availability. Okay. We, could, we could possibly get one you know, within maybe two, three months. Okay, good. Does anyone else have any questions on the back truck? Okay, and finally, the uh, mini loader. Yeah, uh, the mini loader is the one piece of equipment that leaves our garage every day. Uh, there's always work for that. The uh, Guys fight over who's going to be using it for the day throughout the departments. Uh, it is a very, very good little piece of equipment for us. It does a tremendous amount of work. The current one is a 
2017. And I know that's not very old, but the brand I don't think is the best. And we've been having a lot of little nickel and dime, but they're getting expensive mechanical problems with it. And now, especially that it's out of warranty, it's it's costly for us to to uh, use and maintain this piece of equipment. But it is the most highly used little thing that we own. Uh, we would like to replace it to something a little uh, better brand, a better manufacturer, uh, something with a better uh, service department, and. It, it, it's it's a very very good little piece of equipment for us, but unfortunately, the one that w uh, the town purchased, uh, we're we're having problems with. with the, what brand uh, is this one? Uh, we looked at a Hitachi, and we currently own a Wacker. Uh, this this little small class, the gross vehicle, the it's a seventy or eight thousand pound class little motor, so the manufacturing there's only a handful of manufacturers that make them uh and just that whacker brand uh doesn't seem to be the greatest we've had a lot of problems a lot of emissions problems with it uh some electrical and like i said it's real and now that it's out of warranty it's you know it's hitting the uh repair budget pretty good does it have any residual value uh yes uh, the, the Hitachi dealer is interested in it for a trade, but they did not want to give us a current value of that right at the moment. Okay. So the, the 55,000 is for a new, new tractor, uh, irregardless of the value of the old one. Correct. Uh, but that it, it will be left. I, I, that little tractor is still worth some money. Like I said, they're just weren't really looking to put a price on it right now uh even for budgetary reasons but depending on how many hours we put on it between now and then and if there's any uh uh exterior blemishes etc so they didn't want to commit to anything at this moment understood hey anyone else all right thank you very much scott we appreciate it thank you thorough explanations and uh Yes. Uh, I, know the, I know the list is pretty long, but everything we're asking for is, you know, relatively, you know, really justified and really needed. Uh, and like I said, once again, it's Linda spoke also. The vehicle problem is, you know, it's, it's a long ways out. Mm -hmm. Okay, then uh, why don't we... Uh... I'll just throw this out to everybody. You want to take all this under advisement? We'll think about it for a week. And then maybe, Linda, we could meet next Wednesday. Is anyone, or is everyone available next Wednesday, same time? Next Wednesday, select board. Oh, boy. Okay. How about Tuesday? Uh, I've got to go to planning board. At about 6.30 for 10 minutes, probably, if I get lucky and get in line. <laughs> 6.30? <laughs> and we yeah. meet at 5.30. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm, I'm willing to, uh, if I have to excuse myself for a little bit, I will. And I don't know how long, it'll, how long, I don't know. You know, we heard all the presentations already, then maybe, Linda, next week you can uh, come in and discuss all the financial side of all this and Carolyn too, if you want. And uh, then we'll take a vote. I think we're ready to move and prioritize what we want to do or not do and take it from there. Does that sound like a plan? So uh, Tuesday at 5.30? Mm -hmm. The 20th. Yep, okay. everyone? Well, cannot be there. Um, how's my voice right now? Is it okay? No, it's hard. It's but we can understand what you're saying, but it's it's difficult. Go ahead, Carol. Let me run. Let me run down. Not now. Oh, we yeah. can hear you. She she's just two doors down. <laughs> oh, okay.
if she's available Thursday, I'm around Thursday. I don't know what your your schedule looks like in Randy's, but you know, uh, Thursday something's going on. Yeah. Oh yeah, this climate. So I don't. I think it's okay to meet without me. I and and here's why I'm saying this. I think the important thing is that you guys are going to prioritize them. Um, Linda certainly knows. Um, you know, we talk enough throughout the week that she's going to know any points that I want to highlight. Um, I think what I would like to ask Paul and the committee, the only input that I'd like to have that I wouldn't be able to give if I wasn't there is moving forward towards town meeting. I would really like this, the capital planning committee to consider doing something similar to what the select board does. And when you go to town meeting to, um, if you, even if it's a department, so we have, you know, four, five, different breakdowns. If, if, a, if a committee member could take on that department to help advocate for it at town meeting, um, I'm just throwing that out there. I find it very helpful with a select board. And I felt that's kind of what was missing last year. Um, and so I just wanted to ask for your consideration of possibly um, breaking up liaisons for each department that's being represented. Okay, that's something we'll we can discuss next week. So are we that we're Tuesday? Plan? Tuesday at 5 30, yes. Yes. Everyone yeah. else? Sounds good. Okay. And I, I, I can probably talk to the planning board before their meeting and explain what I need done and maybe I can avoid having to go. Great. Okay, then uh, we will meet next Tuesday at 5.30 and uh, Carolyn, you'll see that the meeting is posted and we'll get a notice with the link as usual. Mm -hmm. And uh, Linda will discuss the financial side of this in a little more detail. Next week. Mm -hmm. The game okay. plan. That gives you enough time, correct? If, yes, it does. If Chris is still on, Chris, can you send me your email? I'm town admin at hadleyma.org. Yes, I can do that. I'll send thank it. In, I'll send it in a few minutes. Awesome. Thank you. And Chris, you're okay with uh, 530? Yes. Next Tuesday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Then uh, any other business anyone wants to discuss? Hearing none, uh, a Motion to adjourn will be entertained. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Roll aye. call. Roll, Roll call. call. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Old habits are hard to break. Yes, they okay. are. Okay. What are we going to do next week without you? <laughs> Christine Kipchinski. Aye. Randy Eisen. Aye. David Phil. Yes. And Paul McCretsky. Yes. The meeting is adjourned at 6.57.